Hello and welcome to the group room where we're at the 34th annual CTRC AACR San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. I'm very happy to be joined right now with Dr. Hope Rugo, clinical professor in the Department of Medicine and director of breast oncology and clinical trials education at UCSF Helen Diller Family Comprehensive Cancer Center. Thanks for having me. So the the arsenal for metastatic disease continues to grow, which is very exciting. Uh, arubulin is another compound that's used in more advanced disease. We're talking a lot about targeted agents, you know, ER positive, HER2 positive disease. At least 30% of our patients in the metastatic setting don't have either of those subtypes. And the backbone of our treatment after hormone therapy and for HER2 positive disease is still chemotherapy. And so we're always looking for new chemotherapy agents. And really, even as recently as a year, a couple of years ago, there was a general thought that we'd reached again a ceiling in terms of chemotherapy agents. Um, but clearly that's not the case. And iribulin is a fascinating agent that's derived from the marine sea sponge. Now it's synthetically made, obviously, but it's a class of drug, first of its class, called halochondrins. And like taxanes, it targets the microtubule that allows cells to divide, allows the nucleus to divide. So that's the whole process that allows cells to grow. And Iribulin actually took quite a while to get into the market, but they designed a very clever trial. The FDA, we've heard all about it with bevacizumab and the withdrawal, really wants survival endpoints. So for iribulin, they said, you know, we can't counter paclitaxel or docetaxel. There's so many, nab paclitaxel, there's so many drugs out there that target the same area. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we're better in resistant cancer. So their trial, the EMBRACE trial, actually randomized patients who'd had three to five prior chemotherapy treatments for advanced breast cancer to either get aribulin or treatment of physician choice. And now, they showed a survival benefit. Now a lot of trials are being directed in exactly the same way, same design. Mm -hmm. Aribulin is given over five minutes weekly for two weeks and then off a third week, and its major side effect is actually low blood counts. So if you can give growth factors and manage the low blood counts, it's very well tolerated compared to some of the other chemo agents we give. There's a fairly low rate of neuropathy or the numbness of fingertips and toes compared to many other agents that we give. So it's exciting to have a new agent, and we're moving it now into earlier treatment of metastatic disease. Uh, and combining it with other agents. And while it's a chemotherapy, aribulin still represents this kind of, and I, I know it's a synthetic, but it's organic in the sense that it's a botanical, or not a botanical, but it, it comes from the ocean, which yeah. makes it a um, <laughs> natural say. product. But I think that, you know, that's a, that's a really interesting comment because pretty much all of the agents we have are natural products. At least they're synthetically derived from natural products. Paclitaxel from the bark of the Pacific yew tree, the, the yew tree right. docetaxel from the needles of the mm -hmm. Pacific yew tree, thought initially before the synthetic process to be a renewable resource. Uh, Ixabepalone comes from a bacteria from the banks of the Zambezi River, the, site of, the inside of a bacteria, fascinating thing. Even doxorubicin, you know, our original effect, most effective chemotherapy for breast cancer is an antibiotic, a macrolide antibiotic. So most of the drugs we have come from a natural source and aren't, you know, sort of entirely synthetic. The agents that are entirely synthetic are our targeted biologic agents. It's fascinating, actually. The chemo drugs, yeah, they come from natural sources, but the other ones, they're engineered, they're designed. You know, mm -hmm. you want to hit a target, and you design that drug, which is a very neat thing to see, the 3D representations, mm -hmm. to hit that target. But what's interesting is that uh, the antibodies seem to be pretty well directed, but the, the other agents, the pills seem to have this off-target toxicity. Someone said at ASCO, I think it was, that aribulin is maybe the last major chemotherapeutic breakthrough in the treatment of, uh, of breast cancer. Do you, do you think that's really true? I don't know. I mean, I certainly, it's the, la it's the um, last drug for a while because there aren't any chemotherapy drugs out there that are really moving ahead. And, you know, we knew about aribulin and participated in a phase two trial, you know, 
eight years ago or longer, so it's been around for a while. I think that there are, there's still room for other more effective agents. There's, it would be nice uh, if we could find um, markers that help us determine what the right drug is, but we don't seem to be getting there too quickly. But aribulin is a fascinating drug. When you give the agent, you know, we thought originally maybe your hair wouldn't fall out, but most people, especially if they're on a lot of chemo before their hair falls out, uh, but it grows back full head of hair while you're on the chemo. And that's fascinating. How, and long, that's does it to, how long does it take after? Not long. I had gave one of my patients started growing back at the end of the second cycle. That's only six weeks. Is it a 21 day falling out of the hair is? Well, actually for these drugs, and it depends, you know, a lot of times when we're giving drugs like this, patients are, uh, have gotten prior treatment, so their hair might be a little more sensitive. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe if their liver isn't quite right, they don't metabolize the drug right. as well. So I see hair falling out in one or two weeks. What's on the horizon? What do you see as the next phase in the successes and challenges with the treatment of metastatic disease. We're working on a project to try and target macrophages so that the host response to cancer, your response to the cancer that's in you, seems to play a role in resistance and, and um, just nastiness of the cancer. And we are funded by the Komen Foundation to actually look at that in combination with aribulin. So we're giving a macrophage inhibitor with aribulin in women who have advanced triple negative breast cancer. Thank you, Dr. Hope Rugo, clinical professor, the Department of Medicine and the Director of Breast Oncology, the Clinical Trials Program at UC San Francisco. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rugo.